Hi there Lincoln owners. Today in your 2019 Lincoln Nautilus, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Direct Connect base plate. And this is what our base plate looks like when it's installed. You'll just be able to see your safety chain attachment and the connection where your tow bars will go to passing through here, but they don't stick out too far, just barely beyond the front of the fascia here. You'll also have a connection point where you can add your electrical connectors as well as a connection point mounting point for your breakaway switch. So you've got pretty much everything you need for a flat tow right with this package so you can get everything nice and neat here at the front. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your motorhome and your vehicle. You'll need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. You'll also need your base plate, which is your connection point for your tow bar on your vehicle. You'll need your diode wiring, which will take all the lighting signals from your motorhome and send them to the lights at the back of your vehicle. And lastly, you'll need your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit the brakes in your motorhome to help you come to a safe stop. Now, a couple additional components you're going to want for your Nautilus here in order to complete your flat tow setup is a battery disconnect. You can get that from Roadmaster here at eTrailer, and then it's important for when setting up your braking system and making the whole thing work, being able to put it into flat tow. And you'll also need a stoplight switch, which is also important for your braking system, making all those components work together. You can get that from Roadmaster here as well. When you're ready to attach to your vehicle, we'll take the ends here. They're going to slide in and you'll just push it in and then twist it 90 degrees until it clicks into place. We'll want our warning stickers towards the top and we'll repeat this if we're on the other side. And now our tow bar will attach directly to this point here. And this will work with any Roadmaster tow bar, but we've also got adapters available here at eTrailer so you can use other manufacturers with this base plate. When you're ready to use your tow bar, you can take it out of its storage position. It stays in the storage position using the small tabs that you see there. So to release it from that, we're just gonna lift it up and you can see that drops it out of the notch there. We can then extend it over, push it into place. And you'll notice here that with the e-trailer tow bar, the arm supports itself, so you don't have to move it around as much with a lot of the Roadmaster and Blue Ox and other brand tow bars out there. The arm just drops down real fast, but you get some support with this one. It might go down a little bit slow, but it's a whole lot easier to maneuver it with this one. We'll then take this one off the same way. And if you hooked up your cables, you want to just undo those. We can then bring our arm out, line it up between our base plate. We'll then take the pin from the outside in, slide it through, and then on the opposite side, we'll secure it with the smaller pin. If you have a Roadmaster tow bar, these pins will come included. If you've purchased an e-trailer tow bar that's designed for Roadmaster base plates, you'll have to purchase the pins separately. We'll then hook up the other side the same way. And then we can hook up the rest of our components, which would include our safety cables, our diode wiring. And if you have a supplemental braking system, you'll want to make sure you remember the breakaway cable for that as well. Now that we're all hooked up, we're ready to place our vehicle into flat tow and hit the road. Now that we've covered some of our features, if you want to see how it gets installed, go ahead and follow along with me in the shop here and we're going to get, do it together. We'll begin our installation at the front of the vehicle with our hood open. The plastic cover located here needs to get removed and there's a total of 16 fasteners we need to take off. There are little push pins just like this. And to remove these, you'll simply take a flat bladed screwdriver, you can push it in the notch on the end there, give it a little twist, that'll pop up the head and then you can get your screwdriver under the rest of the clip and pull the whole thing out. We'll repeat that for all the remaining clips. With all the fasteners removed, we can pull our cover up and set it aside where it won't get damaged. That's gonna re reveal some additional fasteners that we're gonna need to remove. We'll then remove those seven fasteners that are revealed with a T20 Torx bit. We'll now need to remove the fasteners located on our fender liner here that go up. There's a total of five on each side. I also turned the steering wheel all the way towards the passenger side to give me more room to work. 
These ones are a little bit bigger than the ones that we had removed up top, but they remove the exact same way. Sometimes with the bigger ones, it can be easier to start it with a screwdriver and then switch over to a trim panel tool to get these removed. We can then take the trim piece here, and this is just gonna pull outward. And we only need to pull it outward until we get past this point here. There are little clips up in here. And you can use your trim panel tool to get behind those clips to help get those released. And that's really as far as we need to go. I like to just get that first one clipped, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick here. To keep your trim panel away from the area you're working in, I recommend just using a rag. You can take a rag here and just kind of fold it up and then just poke it behind your trim piece here. And that'll hold it out away from our fascia because we're gonna be pulling this off and removing this. That keeps it away for us while we're working. Next, we're gonna need to peel back on our fender liner here because we do need to get up inside here. Because there are some fasteners that are located up in here, right? Where the seam is on top, there's gonna be three bolts that you'll need to remove. We'll then remove those three fasteners using an eight millimeter socket. It can be a little tight to get up in here, so I would recommend a swivel head ratchet if you have one, to be able to maximize your throw in this confined space. So there you go, you can see what our fastener looks like there. There is a total of three. So now that we've got all those fasteners removed on this side, we're gonna perform the same procedures to get those removed on the other side. We're now underneath the vehicle and we need to remove the undershield here. On each side, we're gonna have eight five and a half millimeter head fasteners we're gonna remove. There's a couple that are hidden right back behind your mud flap, so you don't wanna miss those. These ones around the front here are pretty obvious. But then in this little gully right here, you're gonna find two. We'll get these removed on the other side as well. And then on each side, we're gonna have two seven millimeter head fasteners. So we'll just take our seven millimeter and get those guys out of the way. And then we'll have one push pin fastener that we'll need to remove on each side. These are just like the ones that were in your wheel well. Once we've got all those fasteners removed, you just want to kind of pull it down and slightly rearward. There's a little clip right here towards the middle on the front, a couple on the side right there. So just pull those back and then we can set this aside. That's going to reveal more fasteners below it that we're going to need to remove as well. There are push pins, that's what we reveal down here. And these ones you're gonna to wanna to use a trim panel tool on. You still may need to use your screwdriver just to help get it started. Just cause usually the blade on a screwdriver is a little bit thinner than that of a trim panel tool. So we're gonna kinda of use a little bit of combination of both here. And then we can just pry this pin out of here. You can see it's serrated like that. So they are a little bit more difficult to pull out. One in the middle and one on the other side. We'll get those three removed. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna remove our fascia. You'll start on one side and we're going to pull out and down just a little bit on our fascia. We can then come towards the center to support it. And we're gonna look for any electrical connectors that we may have. Over on the passenger side here, we've got a, an electrical connector here. So we're just going to Press the release tab, and then get that disconnected. We also have another one located up here, so we're just gonna pull this guy off of there, and then we'll get that one disconnected. And then down below here, we've got two more that we also need to get disconnected. For these ones down here, there's gonna be a red lock tab you'll push back first. And then you can press in on the release tab and disconnect it. And the last one just has a button you press in. You can pull it off of its connector, just press in on that release tab and get it disconnected. And then on the driver's side, you also have a line here for the washer sprayer for your camera system on the front. 
we can go ahead and kind of twist this fitting here and pull this hose off here. You are going to lose a little bit of uh, washer spray when this happens. We can just put a cap on it afterwards. We're going to get our fascia set aside first. And then for back on our here where we were leaking, we just took a little rubber plug that we had. You can use any kind of little rubber tube. You could slide some tubing on there and use some clamps to pinch off the tube, or you could, you could stick a, a plug inside of it, like a softer screw, something like a plastic screw or something in there, and just whatever you need to cap it off. You could also just put a bucket down here and drain out your bottle and then fill it up once you're done. We'll now need to drill out a couple of holes in our lower bumper beam here. But the holes that we need to drill out, you can see there's already a pre-drilled hole here, and there's one kind of in the back there as well down low. Now in order to get to those to drill them, we need to get this core support out of the way here. But we, we're not gonna take the whole core support off because that would just be ridiculous. So there's two bolts here. We've put a pole jack in the center here, or if you're at home doing this on the ground, then I would just use your floor jack because you're gonna want something with wheels so you can slightly move this forward and backward so we can get that out of the way so we can get our components drilled out. So now that you've got it supported, we'll take a 10 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts on each side. So now that we have our core support here loose and it's supported, you can see that we can push this in and out as necessary to get to these holes. So we're gonna push in just a little bit here, and we got a half inch drill bit here. We're gonna enlarge this hole to a half inch, and we're gonna go straight on through out the other side, all with half inch. We're gonna do the same thing with this other hole here. And then we'll repeat that for the back one now. For the back one, you can probably just take a screwdriver or a block of wood or something and stick it in there and that'll hold it out for you. We're just kind of using that as a little, a little bit of a spacer. Once we get those drilled out, we'll repeat that over on the other side. Now that we've got all of our holes enlarged, we can put our core support bolts back in place and snug those down. You do wanna make sure you do this because we don't wanna have our core support all loose. We just needed to temporarily get it out of the way for us. Next, we'll need to remove the wiring located here. This is for your ambient temperature sensor. So we're gonna use our trim panel tool to get behind it and pop it out of there. And then we're just gonna follow each clip that it has and get it popped out of there as well. We need to remove it until we reach the top of our bumper beam there. Once you get to this point, you can just tuck it back out of the way. We'll be remounting it at a later step. The area here next to this plastic portion in front of our bumper beam is where our base plate's gonna go. So we need to trim this area out of here. You can do that with a cutting wheel, a razor knife. I'm just gonna use a pair of snips to cut it. We're gonna cut it to about over to this point here. Once we get this trimmed out on this side, we're gonna trim out the other side the same way. In addition to this area we needed to trim out here, we also need to trim off all of the excess all the way around. So we're just gonna be trimming this until it's flush. We're just gonna use our snips once again to do so. Just trimming off all that excess. So here, this is what we want to test and see. We, this needs to fit behind here, and this also needs to fit here, and our holes that we had drilled out need to line up back here. If you can get it all to fit like that, you've got enough trimmed out here. 
So that's really the main thing. So we did have to trim a little bit additional on the sides here in order for this to all fit, including right here. We're going to go ahead and continue on trimming the rest of what it shows in our instructions here because there is also a cross brace that we'll be installing. So it may seem like you're trimming more uh, in what's out in the instructions than you need to to get these to fit. But again, we do have more components. Now that we got everything trimmed out, we can get our base plate set into place. We're going to take the plates that come in our kit and you can see the holes offset. The hole towards the rear, we're going to offset that hole towards the rear. The ones towards the front, we're going to offset the hole towards the front. You're going to get one on top for both the front and back hole, and then you're going to have a third one that you're going to be placing on bottom, only on the front hole. I found it was a little bit easier if you take the base plate though, and we set this into position. So it's just going to slide right over top, and we'll push into place there. We'll then take the other spacer and we can kind of wedge it up in there. And then we'll take the long, large bolts that come in our kit. I've put a little Loctite on there, some red Loctite, and I put a flat washer on it. This is gonna pass down through the top, right down through our base plate until it comes out the bottom. We'll then take a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. And we're just gonna loosely secure it onto there for now. Then we can take the smaller bolt that comes in our kit, but it's nearly as long. It is a little bit shorter than the previous one, but you can see it's a smaller diameter. We put Loctite on that as well as a flat washer. This one's gonna go up through the bottom, through the rear hole that we had cut out, and then it's gonna pass through the top. This washer here, you can kinda also just kinda pull out of the way. So it makes it a little bit easier to see uh, the top of the bolt when you're trying to feed it on through. Got to find that right angle. Once you get that slid up to where you can see it, you can then put your spacer back into place and then go up through both of those. These are also going to secure with a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. We can now use our base plate as a template. We're gonna drill out a half inch hole through the face of our bumper beam right there. You do wanna be careful when drilling this out to not just keep your drill running straight on through once you pass through this hole because there, there are uh, components here for looks like our intercooler here at the front. So we don't wanna puncture that. So just make sure when you get almost drilled through, really gain control of yourself and make sure you just get that hole drilled out without passing through. You can go the thickness of the bumper, so it's okay to go through maybe an inch or so, but we don't want to go further than that. We're now going to take the shorter of the large bolts that come in our kit, put some Loctite on there. We're going to put a lock washer and a flat washer on it. This is going to pass through that hole and then it's going to thread into our nut plate. So we're just going to pass that on through. We'll then bring our nut plate up on the back here. You do want to pay attention because there is a wire back there as well. We want to make sure we don't end up pinching that wire between our components here. Now you are going to have a wire back here. We're going to just take our clip here, our uh, trim panel tools, we're just gonna pull that clip off so we can get that out of the way because that's gonna interfere with where our nut plate needs to go. We can actually just bring it up here on top. And then we can flip this little clip over and it could actually just clip right on to that panel right here. And that'll hold it up out of our way. Then we can take our nut plate, line it up in the back with our bolt and then just thread our bolt right into the nut plate. We can now go back and tighten down our hardware. Our large bolts, we'll use a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. And then for the smaller bolt that's in the back, we'll use a 15 millimeter socket and wrench. 
and then we'll torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. With all of our hardware tightened and torqued on this side, we're going to perform the exact same procedures on this side to get this base plate installed over here. We can now put our electrical brace in place. This is going to just slide in between your two base plates. The hole should line up with your base plate. I'm just going to pass one through. And then on the other side, we're going to put a dribble of Loctite on there and follow that up with a lock washer. We're going to go ahead and get one started on the other side so it'll hold our brace up and then we'll repeat that for the remaining holes on each side. We can then go back and tighten these down. They are going to be a trick to get to. We're going to use a 15 millimeter socket and wrench and you're likely going to need extensions and you're probably going to need two wrenches for that lower bolt because if you look the base plate's blocking it there. So you're not going to be able to probably put a socket on it at all, even if you have an extension. But that upper one we should be able to use a regular tool on. And then we can go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. You are going to likely need a crow's foot in order to get on these to torque, at least this lower one here. A crow's foot acts like a wrench head, but will allow us to slip on in those tighter spaces. We'll then just repeat that and torque the rest of these. And then we're going to take our ambient temperature sensor wire and reroute it back down and click it back into place. Some of your clips here you're not going to be able to put back in because we've covered them up and that's okay. Uh, at this point we've got our base plate fully installed. We're ready to reinstall our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. We are going to have to do some trimming to get the base plate to fit to pass over some of these components here, but I highly recommend that you stop at this point and wait to put your fascia back on and complete the rest of your flat toe setup. Because more than likely you've got a braking system, diode wiring, and potentially other accessories that you're going to install, and it's a lot easier to do that when you've got all of these components out of your way. All of our electrical components are going to route up here and it's a whole lot easier to route those wires when you don't have any of these components in the way. So we're going to go ahead and complete the rest of those components and then we'll get back with you here once we've got those installed and show you how to get that fascia cut out and reinstalled. So we completed installing the rest of our components. Before we put our fascia back on we are going to need to trim out for the attachments on our base plate to pass through. We'll be cutting out the section over here on the side and then we'll just be trimming right down here to open up this area right here. We may need to make additional trim in this area depending on your braking system and your uh, electrical components, how large those are. Likely our electrical components are going to pass you on this side, but we probably are going to have to trim here for our breakaway switch. You can use a rotary tool, a razor knife, or a reciprocating blade, whichever you've got available to you, to cut this out. You can also find a picture in your instructions that illustrate how they want you to cut this out. Once we get that cut out, we'll repeat that on the other side, and then we can take a file in here and just clean up any of these rough edges. Now with an extra set of hands, we can put our fascia back on. Make sure you plug in your washer bottle hose, as well as any electrical connectors that you've disconnected. And then you can just reinstall it in reverse order of how you removed it. After we get the fascia back on, one of the things we did have to do, this is where our electrical components will attach. You can see here the back of our electrical connector would have interfered with our fascia, so we did have to make out a small trim right there just to allow our wiring to be able to pass through. And also, over here on this side, we trimmed out for our uh, breakaway switch as well. So now we've got our fascia reinstalled. We've got a few electrical components here that we need to finish wrapping up for our diodes and stuff like that. And then that'll complete our installation. We'll be ready to hook up to our motorhome, put it in flat tone, hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Direct Connect base plate on our 2019 Lincoln Nautilus.